All right, and welcome. We're going to take a look at uh, reading information paragraphs. So we're going to go through this um, this information paragraph here, and then we've got some questions here and some written responses down here. Whenever we are faced with a reading piece, uh, the first thing that we should really do is grab our grab our pen and highlight highlight the title. Okay, so I'm going to take that. I'm going to highlight the title there, Arriving in Upper Canada. And we know it's a, we know it's a title because it's up, um, it's up top here. Um, but, uh, it's also in a, in a bold font. Um, we can tell that this is not necessarily, uh, oh, if I can get my red pen to work here. There we go. There we go. We can tell that this is not a. Uh, we can tell that this is not a title here. It's part of, part of the document where this was scanned out of, and um, and how we can tell that is just that there's no nothing else in this document here that is read, other than you know at the top of up up at the top of the other pages we've got. We've got selection two, selection two. So that tells us that it's not really a title that goes with the article. Okay. Um, so when we're reading this piece, the first thing I want to do is before I get reading, I'm starting to think about what this title means, arriving in Upper Canada. So, you know, I'm just going to start to start to brainstorm and I'm probably going to say maybe it's about settlers. Right. Uh, maybe pioneers. Right. I might even put down, you know, uh, things I'll be reading about, maybe troubles they've had. Right. Um, things they had to do. Things they had to do and anything and anything that might come to mind. I'll start to think about, I'll start to brainstorm essentially uh what um there you go i'll start to brainstorm what i think i might be i might be reading about right and that just helps me out in the long run right uh, there's my lightning bolt it's not much of a lightning bolt anyway um so we're gonna get a we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna we're gonna start to read read this piece after I've done my brainstorming. So, arriving in Upper Canada. Following the American Revolutionary War of 1775 to 1783, weeds of immigrants who came to be known as Loyalists poured into Canada. They were a highly diverse group both in terms of their ethnic background and their socioeconomic status. The majority were farmers, artisans, soldiers, laborers, and craftsmen who were accompanied by their families. Besides those of British and European descent, there were blacks and native people from the six Iroquois nations. Led by Joseph Brandt, the Iroquois were granted were granted land on the Grand River in southern Ontario as compensation for lands lost in New York State. For many Loyalists, leaving home was a matter of survival. Anyone sympathetic to the British cause could have their land confiscated, be stripped of their civil rights, or be subjected to violence, mob persecution, even imprisonment. Other groups such as Quakers and Pennsylvanian Germans, decided to immigrate to avoid religious persecution. They were disliked in the United States because of their belief in pacifism, because their belief in pacifism obliged them to remain neutral during the war. Many of these religious communities relocated in Waterloo Country, sorry, in Waterloo County, Upper Canada, where their descendants can be found today. The Pennsylvania Germans were also attracted 
to Upper Canada because of the availability of inexpensive tracts of farmland. From about 1800 to 1830, these people seized the opportunity to begin a new life, as their forebears had done when they left Europe for Pennsylvania in the 7th century, 17th century. Loyalist refugees who were located in what is now Ontario and Quebec in 1784 were housed in tents in the first few months. Inside the tent on display, a woman has just given birth, assisted by a midwife. The relocation was organized by the British government as land grants were issued, homes were built, and farms established. The Conestoga Wagon, named after Conestoga Valley in Pennsylvania, was developed by Pennsylvania Germans for long-distance travel and to transport goods to and from market. This sturdy wagon could withstand rough terrain and cross streams. Depending on the number of horses used, it could haul a load weighing up to eight tons, making it an ideal vehicle for the five-week journey from Pennsylvania to Waterloo uh, County in Upper Canada. Inside the wagon could be found items needed to re-establish a farm, including stacks of seeds, namely wheat and flax, for the first planting season, tools such as rakes, hoes, plows, and scythes for tending the fields, food needed for the journey and for the period before the first crops could be harvested, livestock, namely sheep and cattle, and tools and hardware for building barns and houses. In short, limited space meant that only the most essential items were brought on the journey, along with highly valued personal and religious possessions. Most items were stored in trunks, while tools were attached to the outside of the wagon. All right. Now that we've gone through the uh, the reading, we can see here that there is a picture of there's a picture of the wagon, the Conestoga wagon here, All right? So that's really that's really neat, and you could imagine you can imagine settlers having to travel near uh, from far distances to uh, to finally settle. So once that's uh, once that's once that's read, what I always encourage students is to kind of go back and reread the uh, reread the article, okay, um, and make notes as we go. So when I take a look when I take a look at when I take a look at this, I'm gonna take my highlighter here. Let's see if I can. I'm gonna grab a something a little bit thicker there. Um, when I grab my highlighter, I'm going to take a look at and highlight important pieces of information, right? So people after the Revolutionary War, immigrants who, who came to be known as loyalists poured into Canada. Okay, so that's about that. All right. Um, then when I go down here, for many loyalists, leaving home was a matter of survival. Right? Why was it a matter of survival? Because anyone sympathetic to the British cause could have their land confiscated. Kind of like that's that's really um, uh, that's really a good reason to leave if you're if if you're being persecuted. Right? So these people were persecuted um, for being pacifists or for being sympathetic to a British cause. Um, Loyalist, loyalist refugees who relocated in what is now Ontario and Quebec were housed in tents in the first few months. And there was a curious piece of little information here, and you could tell that perhaps this article was lifted from, from some, from some other piece where, where we have more, um, where we have more pictures. Because it says here, I'm just gonna erase this here, uh, so that I can get my pen in there. Um, Notice that it says inside the tent on display, a woman has just given birth, assisted by a midwife. Now, 
this is the only picture we have and we don't see that here so we can imagine that this might be this piece might be lifted from something else so we're just going to uh we're gonna kind of move along here and ignore that little piece then there's information about the conestoga wagon named after the conestoga valley valley in pennsylvania okay and and we have a picture of a wagon here so i can i can assume that this is the Conestoga wagon. All right. So it talks about it being a sturdy wagon that could withstand rough terrain, right? It could haul up to eight tons, right? It was a five week journey from Pennsylvania to Waterloo County in Upper Canada, right? And here we could find things that would, things that would be inside the, um, inside the wagon would be it looks like things that would need you would need to reestablish a farm okay so that's kind of that's kind of important information so i've just done a rough highlight through through my through my reading and now i'm going to go over to to my multiple choice questions here all right well so I'm going to go through this and take a look at uh, take a look at these questions. You can feel free to pause the video here, and um, when we come back, you'll see the you'll see the responses that we that we have. So just take a quick take a quick read through, take a separate sheet of paper, and write down your responses. Okay. I'll just pause the video. I'll let you pause it here. And when you come back, you can come back to the answers. All right. So we're back here and you can see that I've taken the time to highlight all the, um, all the answers and to make notes of where they are in the, in the text here. So when we take a look at number one, it asks, why did the loyalists come to Canada after the American Revolutionary War? We're going to look for, um, look for why that was. So we're going to start reading where they talked about the war. And that's going to be the first, the first paragraph up here. And as we read along, we realize that, you know, they talk about many different, many different things here about who the loyalists were in a way. Um, but then we don't really get the answer till the second paragraph. It says, for many loyalists, leaving home was a matter of survival. Anyone sympathetic to the British cause could have their lands confiscated or be, stri uh, be stripped of their civil rights or subjected to violence, mob persecution, or even imprisonment. Um, so that's, that's the answer there. And we'll notice that they, I would say that out of all these answers, I would say that they were treated unfairly by the Americans. The reason why it's not any of these other answers, even though they appear here, is because it says other groups, and we're not interested in what the other groups were, and for the other groups, we're talking about the Qua Quakers uh, and the Pennsylvania Germans. We're not talking about that. We're, t we're interested in the loyalists here, right? The loyalists. And they were the ones that were, they were the ones that were subjected to the British cause. So they were the ones that were treated unfairly. And that's why that's the answer is B. Number two, what's the best meaning of the word diverse? Okay. Whoop. Sorry, touch my microphone there. Um, see, that's a tricky one. Uh, when I read through this, it says here that it's in the second paragraph, but actually the word is in the first is in the first paragraph so that's a bit of a typo in the question and hopefully whenever you come across um situations like that uh you uh you take your time and you read before or after the um that paragraph right or wherever it says to read just so so you can find that word so it took a little bit of skimming and scanning to um, skimming to find to find it, and it was actually up here in the first in the first paragraph. And so when I take a look at diverse, you know, if diverse isn't violent, loyal, um, or hardworking. It's more to do with varied. 
And we can get that definition from its context. It says that they were a highly diverse group, both in terms of their ethnic background and their socioeconomic status. So we we know right there that when they talk about ethnic background, socioeconomic status, none of those really fit with any of those other ones. And they are different. So different is varied, right? So there we go. For number three, the majority of loyalists were, uh, it says here, professional group, uh, black, craftsmen, or Iroquois. And when we take a look, I'm going to take a look at question number three. It says here, and I've got it highlighted, number three. It says that uh, majority, the majority were farmers, artisans, soldiers, laborers, craftsmen who were accompanied by their families. Nowhere in there does it mention any of any of the other groups there, like the Iroquois, the Black, or or professional. But it does. It does talk about craftsmen, and craftsmen is there. So that's your answer for number three. Number four, why were the loyalists unpopular in the United States? Well, this kind of piggybacks on, on one. And we can't say that they, you know, they were unpopular because they were treated unfairly by Americans. There's an, there's an actual reason for that. And the reason is right there. And it says, it was because that they were sympathetic to a British to to the British. Okay, so that would be that would be the answer for that, right? Why were the loyalists unpopular? It says, and it says right there, it was a matter of survival for them. Okay, when we go to number five, why did the why did immigrants to Canada at that time uh, make use of the Conestoga wagon? Um, well. I would say here, when we take a look, we're going to go down to here to the part, the paragraph where it talks about the Conestoga wagon. Uh, I would say that it was because that this, that out of all the answers here, and there are some that might, might make sense. And, you know, um, especially question or answer number D, it said it could haul up to eight tons. And that's a really good reason why they would why they would make use of the Conestoga wagon. But I would say more aptly that it could withstand rough terrain and cross and cross streams. Um, I think that was, I think that was the main purpose for, for this wagon was to haul things over long distances. So my answer is, uh, my answer is C there. Although a D option would also, could also be very appropriate, but we're going to leave it as C. For number six here, the item, uh, the items the loyalists carried in their wagons indicate that they were mostly a farmers, carpenters, builders, or religious. Well, over here in six, it says that the inside the wagon could be found items needed to reestablish a farm, including, and it goes on to list things that they would need to establish a farm. So out of all of these, although, you know, you might have carpenters in the mix, you might have builders, right? And you might have, they might have brought some religious artifacts, especially if they were considering building their, building their churches. Uh, I think, I think that it says very clearly that it would be farmers. Now, number seven is more of a thinking, thinking response, right? Right, because it's not directly stated inside. Uh, the answer is not really directly stated in the text. It says the picture of the Conestoga uh, Conestoga wagon is intended to show the reader. Right, all of these answers here. It says the size and shape of a wagon, or you know the you know the courage and determination of the loyalists. Well, that really has nothing to do with the picture. When you take a look, it's just a picture of the wagon. The craftsmanship of the Pennsylvania Germans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's okay, but it's hard to see the craftsmanship. It's just a, it's just a it's a wagon. Um, maybe some of you might be able to zoom in there and take a look, and maybe you can see some craftsmanship there. I'm sure it's very I'm sure it's very well put together, especially if it cross streams and the like. Um, the limited space for personal possessions. Yeah, I mean you can see that. Yeah, it's not exactly a. 48 foot transport trailer that you'd move your home if you had lots of stuff to move. Um, and these people were uprooting their lives from Pennsylvania and driving and driving the war, their wagons and their horses up, up north to Upper Canada or to uh, Waterloo County. So, um, 
yeah that that could be that could be a possible that could be a possible answer but i really think it's just to show the size and shape of the wagon when when you read those when i read that question and uh the responses that are available that's the first one that jumps out at me right there okay so those are the answers for the multiple choice there so we're going to move down to we're going to move down to the to the written to the written responses So with the written response here, it we have a short um, we have a few lines here to answer to provide an answer. So it says, in what ways was the plight of the loyalists similar to the refugees coming to Canada today? Okay, so we start to think about different things, and we start to think about things that would be inside the article. I mean, the article talked about the art, article talked about fleeing from persecution up here. Um, it also talked about, you know, how they traveled and that they couldn't bring a lot with them. So, you know, maybe answers might include, um, you know, uh, flee from, from, free from political strife. Right, um, couldn't bring couldn't bring much with them, right? Uh, maybe long journeys. right? Now these are just. Guys, please note, these are just my notes, right? Uh, it's not going to be what I'm going to answer there. And I will formulate, you'll, I'll take these, these three and I can, I can put that into, put that into a, uh, into a small paragraph or a, just a few short sentences. So I might, uh, so I might say, I might say, the plight of the loyalists is similar to that of refugees coming to Canada today because many refugees today flee from political strife. They also can't bring much with them when they, when they travel. And many have to travel long distances to make it to their freedom. So that might be, that might be an answer. Right. Um, but you'll notice here that this this question and I will get my pen out of the way here. Uh, this question here has got a second part to it. Right. And it says use information from the selection to support your own ideas, uh, to support your own ideas. Uh, sorry. to uh, Excuse me. Use information from the selection and your own ideas to support your answer. Well, all of this information here does does all of that okay so we've ensured we've ensured that okay now for number nine it says summarize this selection so include the main idea and one point that supports it okay so we need to i'm going to underline that include a main idea and one point that's that supports it Okay, so I'm going to go up to my article, and I'm just going to just going to create some room here. I'm going to grab this, and I'm just going to move it over just so that I can write over here in the side. Okay, all right. I'm going to grab my black pen. So when I take a look at this article again, I'm just going to go over each paragraph here and I'm just going to mark down what each paragraph is about. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to grab a green pen here. So the first paragraph tells, tells me when and who came to Upper Canada. All right, and it and it and it says that they were you know the loyalists and where and what, when and who, right? 
this tells me the why why they came right um, this little bit of information tells tells me a little bit about uh, tells tells me a little bit about the ref about them as refugees um, that they were you know they were relocated in in Ontario and Quebec okay so there's a little bit of the where there's a little bit of the where here okay um, this tells me this paragraph tells me how they came. And this paragraph tells me what they brought. So if I'm looking at a main idea here, I would say, I grab a blue pen, right? I would say that the main idea of this, uh, of this information piece is that loyalists came to Canada by wagon to flee from a U.S. government. Government. Okay. So when I take a look at this main idea, and I'm sure there there are different ways to put to to write out a main the main idea here. Main idea. All right. It's just kind of a rough draft here. Now I go back to the question. It, it says summarize this, this selection, include a main idea and one point that supports it. Okay. So I've got here the main idea. That's right. So loyalists came, it kind of came to Canada by wagon to flee, uh, to, to flee a U.S. government, government. I'm going to put a period, period, period there. And I'm going to just put one point that supports this main idea. And I'd say loyalists. were sympathetic to the British. Okay. And this is good. These are, these are going to be my two sentences that I would, I would plop, I would plop down. I would plop down here. All right. I would take these two sentences. And I and I plop them down there. Okay, so here we've got reading an informational uh, an informational piece, an informational paragraph, and going through some multiple choice questions, brainstorming, going through some multiple choice questions, making our highlight, marking it up, and working on the responses there. Okay, so that's it for this this item. Um, and I uh, hope that was helpful and you can use some of these tips and what I've done here when you work on your own. Take care and have fun.